Hey, what is up, guys? Matt here from the Toasty Bros, and I'm here to bring you my coverage of the Ryzen 5 1500X. Can its 4-core, 8-thread processor be viable for a mid-range gaming PC in 2017? Let's talk about that. If you haven't been living under a rock, you would have seen that Ryzen 5 was released to the public a few days ago. We actually did a build featuring the Ryzen 5 1600X and a live stream, which you can check out if you hit the eye in the top right corner. In that video, you could tell it outperformed most other processors at its budget and performed very well with an RX 470. Now, what we're going to be doing today is pairing the 1500X, a four core, eight threaded CPU with a turbo boost at 3.7 gigahertz with the Galax 1050 Ti, which we did a review of here and our are also in the middle of a giveaway for, so be sure to check that link down below to enter that if you haven't already. What I plan to do is use the numbers from my review with the 1050 Ti being paired with an i7 5820K at 4 GHz and the same amount of RAM, 16 GB, and just see how close in gaming test does the Ryzen 5 1500X compete with the X99 counterpart. While I do know that this is no apples to apples comparison and there are a lot of variables at play, I wanted to give you all some idea of how, what you can expect from a similar rig, which is not too off base from something someone would probably buy themselves with a 1050 Ti and a Ryzen 5 1500X. So let's just not waste any more time. Let's just get right into those benchmarks. I plan on running the numbers for the 1050 Ti and 1500X combo first, and then go over with you some of the comparison numbers between that of the 5820K testing. Also good news because this time my capture card decided to play nice today and work so I knew I loved it for a reason. Let's get into those benchmarks. Now that you've seen the numbers, let's go over some of the outliers between the two runs. The first game we're going to take a look at is Doom. I ran the testing with OpenGL mode enabled so Fraps could detect the FPS and be able to give us viable benchmark numbers. The results on both machines were pretty interesting, but I do have to point out that the 5820K, while it's not designed for gaming tasks, is a much more expensive CPU than the 1500X on the Intel counterpart side, and it kind of shows you what the power is of the 1500X compared to its price. As I was saying, the results are very interesting with averages roughly the same at 72 on the 5820K and 71 on the 1500X. The minimums are within margin of error running the same test on both machines with the 5820K actually losing to the 1500X by only 3 FPS, 58 to 55. The max is where you see the 5820K stretch its legs with a total of 101 FPS over the 88 on the 1500X. Next game we're going to check is H1Z1 where for both tests we took average of 3 runs falling into the battlefield and then running over and looting some things. It's a not perfect way to replicate a test, but since this title doesn't really have a good way of replicating benchmarks, it's the best way we could do it. And in this case, the 1500X actually had higher averages compared to 78 over 68 and minimum 66 over 50, which is very odd and pleasing at the same time. Again, I recommend you take this with a grain of salt because these tests are very hard to replicate, but I just want to throw this game in due to popular demand. Now for The Witcher 3, which actually showed me the results that I was expecting in a title that actually demands the system pretty evenly across the board, where the 5820K takes a hold and wins out in pretty much all departments. The thing to realize here is that I ran this on ultra settings 1080p. The fact that the 1500X even is within margin of this, while I grant you an older $300 plus CPU, 
really tells the story of the value that the 1500X brings to the table and having only four cores and eight threads compared to six and 12. Now, due to some crossover benchmarking issues, these are the only numbers I could get between the 5820K system and the 1500X. So let's just recap. While the 5820K and 1500X traded blows, I think the Witcher 3 test is the one that tells the clearer picture. The 1500X is a killer CPU. While it may not have the best IPC in the world, and many other reviewers have dove deeper into this than I actually have in the benchmarks here, which I'll leave some links down below to some really awesome channels I can confirm this, the 1500X may actually be the great mid-range CPU that people are waiting for, and especially bundled with a cooler for 190 bucks, you really can't go wrong with this CPU, and I highly recommend you consider it for a mid-range PC build. So I hope you guys actually enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like down below and comment what you think. Be sure to follow our Twitter and join our Discord community for more content from the Toasty Bros. I hope to see you on the next one, guys. And before I go, I'm going to leave a straw poll down below. What do you guys think of this new set? What do you think? I'm kind of off script right now, but I really like this set. And I don't know how the lighting looks right now, but I'm planning on going back to this for the foreseeable future because it's really easy to record videos and it feels a lot more natural. So let me know what you think. Peace out, guys.